prior to release, AMD made some pretty bold claims in regards to the gaming performance of the new Zen 5 processors, and one such claim was that the Ryzen 7 9700X would be 6% faster than Intel's Core i7-14700K. Now, AMD has since walked back this claim, stating in a community blog post that if you run the 14700K with the Intel Extreme Profile and the same high-speed memory that most reviewers use, the 9700X is at parity with the 14700K. This actually strongly suggests that AMD's marketing claims were based heavily on what we would call nerfed Intel performance, as they were limiting the 14700K to what is almost certainly a 125 watt profile, a profile that Intel has already officially stated was not to be used with K-SKU parts. That aside though, claiming that the 9700X is able to deliver the same gaming performance as the 14700K is still a pretty bold claim given that we found it was 5% slower in our day one review. So, how do they compare in over 40 games using both the current Windows 11 23H2 build without the recent patch, and then the Insider Preview 24H2 build? Today, we're gonna find out. But before we do, this video is sponsored by no one. Damn it, Balin, can you please get us some sponsors? I need to better pay the bills, mate. Well, since Balin's being late, I don't know what he's doing over there. I think he's pretending to edit a video or something. I'm on no sleep, no sleep. But I do actually still have to pay Balin even when he is pretending to edit videos. And a good way of doing that, well, a good way for you to help me do that is join the members tab. We have a new join button, so you can support the channel that way. Clicking that does give you access to some cool perks such as our exclusive Discord server and there's some other cool things there. So yeah, if you're interested in checking that out and keeping Balin in business, though I'm not sure we should. Balin, should we keep you in business? Maybe. <laughs> Balin said maybe and then laughed, so he's taking this seriously. Anyway, thanks guys, we'll move on. Okay, so as usual, there is a lot to go over, though I won't be discussing each and every single result individually because there are 42 games. And we have done that recently. It's a very long video. But I think for this one, we'll just look at two dozen of probably the more interesting results, and then we'll go over everything in those big breakdown graphs. Please note that for testing the Core i7-14700K, we're using the latest BIOS with the microcode update. And we're using the Intel Extreme Profile, so PL1 and PL2 equal 253 watts. I've also updated our X670E motherboard to BIOS version F33B, though I'm not enabling the 105 watt TDP mode, which will make next to no difference for the 9700X anyway. Okay, let's get into it. First up we have ACC, and using 23H2 we find similar performance between the 9700X and 14700K, though the 1% lows of the Intel processor were 7% higher. Switching over to the Insider Preview, the performance of the 14700K goes unchanged, but the 9700X saw an 8% increase, handing it a comfortable lead here. Moving on to Halo Infinite, we again find that the 14700K delivers similar performance using either version of Windows, while the 9700X was 4% faster using 24H2, a small increase that nudged it closer to the Intel processor. Testing with F124 saw the 9700X just edge out the 14700K by a 4% margin on the current 23H2 build. But when we move to 24H2, it's now 9% faster. So a noteworthy margin there in favor of the AMD processor. Performance in Modern Warfare 3 is much the same using either version of Windows 11, and this meant that the 9700X was 6% faster on average. Now, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 highlights the issue with 23H2 for Ryzen. Whatever's causing the performance regression is solved with 24H2, as we go from a situation where the 9700X was 13% slower than the 14700K using 23H2, to on par when using 24H2. We don't see quite the same thing in Spider-Man Remastered, but even so, whereas the 9700X is 15% slower using 23H2, it's 9% slower with 24H2. It's still a reasonable margin, but it is a big improvement for the Ryzen processor. Using 23H2, the 9700X was just 3% faster than the 14700K, but on 24H2, that margin is extended to 9%, so another substantial performance increase in favor of the Ryzen processor. We see when testing with Ghost of Tsushima, 
that the 9700X was slower than the 14700K by a 4% margin on 23H2, but moving to 24H2 pushed it slightly ahead. Just a 2% margin, so performance is much the same overall, but still an improvement for the Ryzen processor. The Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty results are similar to that of Microsoft Flight Simulator, in the sense that on 23H2, there is something gimping Ryzen's performance, as here the 9700X is 6% slower than the 14700K, but yet when we move to 24H2, performance reaches parity. We're also seeing a similar thing in Borderlands 3. The 14700K delivered similar performance on both 23H2 and 24H2, whereas the 9700X saw a 10% uplift. That said, the 1% lows are still much lower relative to the 14700K, which is a bit unusual. There was no performance uplift for either processor using 24H2 in Baldur's Gate 3, making the 9700X a good bit slower than the 14700K, around 12% slower in fact. The Core i7 processor delivered the same performance in Black Myth Wukong using either version of Windows 11. Meanwhile, the 9700X was 5% faster on 24H2, placing it on par with the 14700K, at least when comparing the average frame rate. The 1% lows were still higher on the Intel processor, 10% higher when looking at that 24H2 data. Both CPUs saw a 3% uplift on 24H2 in Hitman 3, which meant the 14700K was still around 12% faster than the 9700X, so an easy win here for Intel then. The Ryzen 7 processor isn't able to beat the Core i7 in Warhammer 3, but depending on the Windows 11 version used, it can get reasonably close. For example, using the current 23H2 build, it is 8% slower, but with 24H2, it's just 5% slower, and we also see that those 1% lows close up. Returnal saw no performance difference between these two CPUs using either version of Windows, and we did see results like this in a surprisingly large number of games, though I've skipped over many of them as they're rather uninteresting, or at least the data is. But of course, we will feature them in the big breakdown graphs towards the end of the video. Here we have an example in Hogwarts Legacy where both CPUs saw massive performance gains when upgrading to 24H2. On the current 23H2 build, the 14700K was 14% faster than the 9700X, but on 24H2 it's just 6% faster, and this is due to the fact that the Ryzen processor enjoyed a 17% performance uplift. Still, even the Core i7 became 10% faster, so for whatever reason, Hogwarts Legacy plays much better on 24H2. Now, the Star Wars Jedi Survivor results are very interesting, but please note this data was recorded prior to the recent patch. Testing on 23H2 saw the 14700K beat the 9700X by 6% margin, but unexpectedly that margin grew to 11% on 24H2, as the Intel CPU saw a massive 20% performance uplift. Both CPUs saw a small performance improvement when moving to 24H2 in Dying Light 2, but in this example, scaling remained the same as the 14700K maintained a 9% lead over the 9700X using both versions of Windows 11. Both CPUs saw a performance improvement with 24H2 in The Last of Us Part 1, but in both instances the 14700K was faster. Using 23H2, the Intel processor was 8% faster, and then we're moving to 24H2, that margin actually slightly extended out to 10%. Now, Fortnite is one of the games where we found massive gains for Ryzen on 24H2. But for Intel, there appears to be no change. This means while performance is equal between these two processors using 23H2, when we upgrade to 24H2, the 9700X becomes 14% faster, and that is a massive performance uplift. Now, from previous testing, we found that Zen 5 processors don't perform that well in Starfield, and we're certainly seeing that here as the 14700K is at least 17% faster, seen when using the Insider Preview build. So no matter which way you slice it, the Core i7 is much faster in this title. Next up, we have Watch Dogs Legion, and when using 23H2, the 9700X is 9% slower than the 14700K, and despite a 9% uplift when moving to 24H2, it's still 7% slower than the 14700K, as the Intel processor also saw a performance uplift. 
The Remnant 2 results are similar to what we've seen in games such as Cyberpunk and Flight Simulator, in the sense that the 9700X is much slower using 23H2, but 24H2 does appear to solve whatever the problem was here for Ryzen. In this example, the 9700X was 13% slower on the current Windows 11 build, but just a percent slower on the 24H2 Insider Preview build. Now, regardless of the Windows version used, we see the same performance in Horizon Forbidden West, and this means that the 9700X is 7% slower than the 14700K. The last game that we're going to look at the results for is the Rift Breaker, and here the 14700K is much faster than the 9700X when using 23H2. In this example, the Ryzen processor is 13% slower, though we are able to reduce that margin to 6% with 24H2. The Intel CPU is still faster, but that's a much smaller margin. Okay, so as I found in my day one review testing 13 games, the 9700X is 5% slower than the 14700K using Windows 11 version 23H2, and we confirm that here with 42 games. There are 23 games where the 9700X is slower by a 6% margin or greater, and then 13 of those games saw double digit margins. So the 9700X is clearly slower than the Core i7 processor. But even if we upgrade to 24H2, the 9700X is still slower than the 14700K, though the margin has been reduced to just 3%. So overall, they're a bit closer now, and really you could say performance is comparable, despite the Intel part doing a little bit better. It's not exactly parity like AMD claims, though it is sort of close enough that you'd probably let that claim slide, and it would be possible to achieve parity with a smaller selection of cherry-picked games, let's say, and we do know that first-party benchmarks love to cherry-pick. So where did the Core i7-14700K make the biggest gains on 24H2? There are three key examples, and they include Homeworld 3, Gears 5, and Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Those titles are outliers though, because of the 42 games tested, we saw a 5% margin or less in just over 80% of them. This led the 14700K to being just 3% faster on average when using 24H2. So there is some performance to be gained on Intel processors, though not nearly as much as what we see with Ryzen, as the 9700X saw a 7% uplift. Now, just because I know some people will want to see this data, even though it was included in the day one review and it won't have changed, but I have included some power figures using 23H2. Testing with Baldur's Gate 3, the 9700X consumed 84 watts of power, while the 14700K sucked down an insane 171 watts. The Intel CPU did deliver 13% greater performance in this example, but we also saw power usage increase by 104%. It's a similar story in The Last of Us Part 1, where the 14700K offered 8% greater performance, but at the cost of increased power usage, this time by 127%. Finally, in Cyberpunk 2077, the 14700K was 7% faster, but again required massive amounts of power to achieve that small performance advantage, 129% more power in this example. And this right here is why it's been difficult, if not impossible, to recommend Intel's 13th and 14th generation CPUs, and that's before the stability concerns were a concern. Admittedly, this was a bit of an odd comparison because although the Ryzen 7 9700X and Core i7 14700K, they are priced to be direct competitors. For various reasons, I don't actually recommend you buy either of them as there are two alternatives that make far more sense. Firstly, the 14700K, it costs at least $380 US and the 9700X $340 US. And if you're after the ultimate in gaming performance, we recommend just spending a little bit extra to get the 7800X 3D, though right now that's easier said than done as availability for the 7800X 3D looks very poor. So in the event that you can't get the X3D chip, we recommend saving the money and getting the 7700X, which can be had for just $270 right now or $250 on Amazon, making it up to 26% cheaper than the 9700X for roughly the same level of gaming performance. And this is true regardless of the operating system used, Windows 10 included. The 9700X is a perfectly fine gaming CPU. As we've seen, it competes really well with the 14700K, 
while using substantially less power. And that's probably an understatement. The 9700X is almost generating energy relative to the Intel processor. Again, the problem with the 9700X is the price. It always has been. Well, that and AMD's very bad marketing claims. If the 9700X was more like $280 US, then I'd certainly suggest buying it, but at $340 US, you're just better off getting the 7700X. As for the 14700K, sure, it's a little bit faster overall, but the power usage alone rubs it out as a potential option in my opinion. Then on top of that, we have the very serious stability concerns. And right now, I'm not really sure where we stand with those. It'll be some time before we know if the current updates have solved the issue or not. So although we wouldn't have recommended the 14700K anyway, we really can't recommend it until we know if those issues have been resolved. So the winner of the 9700X versus 14700K battle is the 7700X. You're welcome. In all seriousness, the primary goal of this content was to see how the Intel processor scaled between the two versions of Windows 11, and there are certainly some gains to be had, but overall, it's a little less impactful for the Intel processors than what we saw with Ryzen, which is what we suspected would be the case. For now, I will be waiting for the official rollout of 24H2 before I do any more CPU benchmarking, and hopefully, it'll be released soon so we can update all of our CPU data and then hopefully we can do all of that before the next generation of Intel processors arrive because if we can't, it's gonna be a little bit messy. Anyway, that is going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, you know what to do, like, subscribe, do all that stuff. Again, we have the new members tab so you can click join and get some cool perks there if you're interested, if not, perfectly fine. We also still have Patreon, so the link to that is in the video description. Uh, yeah, check out either one of those. Uh, your support is greatly appreciated. Yeah, that is going to do it for this one. I'm your host, Steve. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Catch you again soon. I don't know, one of the two, maybe both. <laughs>